everybody in the fan friend world. Thanks for joining us on the, the Tuesday night live show. My name is Dan Orlovsky. Good to be with you guys. I've got Dave Phelps with me as well, a member of the, the team. And we're going to hit you guys tonight with a ton of information going with everything that came through with free agency today, especially at the quarterback positions, all those moves and how it's the domino effect. And then some of the other stuff that went on in free agency, other moves other than quarterbacks, some receivers, some tight ends, some linemen that got signed. So it's good to be with you guys. Hopefully we'll get some questions in and uh, we'll, we'll hit it off from there. Dave, let's start something off. Let's, let's get talking some football, bud. Yeah, let's do it. If nothing else today taught us fans love free agency. I don't know if you knew that as a player, but it's like the second biggest day of the year behind the Super Bowl. It, people are obsessed with it. Well, it's, it's, it's eternal hope. You know, every team gets there. If you were the worst team in the league last year, you now have some hope. Hopefully your team signs some guy, you know, I, they're every, every fan thinks we're one player away, right? We're one guy away. I mean, you saw what happened with the Browns. They make a couple moves and now they're, they're a, a playoff team. So, you know, it's, it's a, it's a fantastic thing to watch, you know, how, how your, your roller coaster ride of your offseason can, can be affected by free agency. It's been cool. It's been a good start. And the best part about it is everybody is a professional GM today. Everybody, including myself. So yeah, we'll get into that. yeah. let's get into it. Let's get into what the real GMs did. So the last two or three days, we had a ton of action. We're going to start at the top with quarterbacks specifically, and we'll get into some players. And we'll go from there. Yeah. Uh, overnight, Broncos move on with Case Keenum. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it makes sense. I I'll – it makes sense for Case to go there. I was very outspoken before free agency started. I said, listen, Case Keenum, not a knock on him, but the reality is out of the quarterback jobs in the NFL last year, his his was the easiest. He, If you look at the receivers, they had the, the top-rated receiver due in the NFL with Thielen and Diggs, really good tight end, and a solid run game. He's got this play caller in Shermer that's now, because of that success, is a head coach, and he had a top-three defense. So I'm looking at it going, well, his job was the easiest out of the quarterbacks in the NFL as far as starters. So then when you get free agency, you go, if you're, you know, if you're Keenum, you're going, well, where can I find a place that can replicate some of those elements? Denver's the one team looking for a quarterback that had that stuff with dear Marius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders, similar to Diggs and Thielen. They've got a decent run game. They've got a play caller now in Musgrave, who's going to run a very similar scheme to Pat Shermer with the West coast offense, which suits case Keenum's game. Well, and they still have a good defense. So Case Keenum-wise, it's the right decision. Now, flipping it for the Broncos, it's interesting because Gary Kubiak, the guy who you know, brought Case Keenum in from the University of Houston down with the Texans, it makes sense that he would want to go Case Keenum. I look at it like this. It's a, it's a, it's a better sign for Paxton Lynch that they signed Case Keenum than they went all in on Kirk Cousins. Because if they went all in on Kirk Cousins, that tells you everything you needed to know about Paxton Lynch where Case Keenum's a guy who he's a six or seven years in now, you can still, he's a guy who's always had to do things the right way, right? As a, as a quarterback, he's always had to study the right way, prepare the right way, lead the right way. So he's going to have the opportunity to, Paxton Lynch will have the opportunity to learn from Case Keenum. So I still think that's a variable. I honestly do. I think they're looking at it going, okay, Case can write the ship for us at the quarterback position for a year or two. We could continue to develop Paxton Lynch and I still think there's a chance that they take a quarterback with the number five pick or early in the second round, especially if Baker Mayfield's there. I, I honestly believe that that is still an option. I think John, John Elway came out in the offseason and said, I will make this right. I will get this position right. And I don't think he's sitting there going, you know what? Assign Case Keenum, so we've got it. I still think there's more to, ha more to happen there. And I think a big piece of it is we don't, or at least I don't know the numbers yet. We haven't seen them. I, I think you said you heard some rumblings of, of two years, I believe. The numbers are going to make a big difference in the Keenum deal. If it's a three or four year deal, that that changes the scope on all of this. Yeah, I, think. I heard two years, which would make sense. You know, it's going to be eighteen or twenty million dollars because that's the going rate for a starting quarterback nowadays, which is nuts. But I still think that you know Elway's got to be thinking if you weren't going to invest that do those dollars in the Kirk Cousins, you've got to invest another draft pick. You have to. You because you've got to get that situation and that position figured out. Is is there any sort of arm strength issue with Keenum in Denver? Any sort of weather implications on that? I don't think. I mean, so. he's going from a nice cozy cozy environment, and we saw what he did in Philly. So yeah, I don't. I don't. That think was a trouble. So. You know, 
Denver usually has okay weather for the great majority of the season. This is the thing that is is the right fit for him. Musgrave's going to call an off. So Case Keenum's best suit schematically is one that allows his body to play in rhythm. That's everything's on time. You don't want him to be this big play action guy, three hitches in the pocket trying to push the ball downfield. It's the very, it's very much the 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 management, the the, the distribution offense, and that's going to be Musgrave's offense for him. So it'll suit him well. Weather will play a, a factor at some point, but it's not going to be as big a deal because the offense doesn't ask you to doesn't ask you to push the ball downfield that much. Okay. I think the one we, we probably can talk about the least is the Vikings. Uh, it's It was kind of assumed uh, in the last week to 10 days that it was going to be Cousins. The investment's huge, guaranteed 84. That's a, that's a lot of dough, but only a three-year deal, which from, from their perspective, I think makes sense. You're not signing like a long-term like baseball-type contract where you're paying this out for 10 years. We've talked about it a lot, but for, for the listeners that haven't heard some of your stuff on Cousins, where's your head? Oh, it's brilliant by Minnesota. It's brilliant because you, if you looked at Minnesota and everyone keeps asking the question, well, you know, uh, you know, why didn't they just bring Case Keenum back? He was so good for them. It was going to be so much cheaper. You plateaued with Case Keenum. He got you as far as he was going to get you if you're the Minnesota Vikings. And so you have this opportunity to get this guy who very rarely the type, you know, this kind of guy hits the, the market. And you have the opportunity to go get him. You've got every other piece in place on your team. Windows are small in the NFL. We're seeing it with Seattle, right? We're seeing what's going on with Seattle and how they're going through a little bit of transition. Windows are small. And when you have your window as an owner and a general manager, you've got to pounce on it. And if that's the one position that you think is holding you back, you you pull all the punches that you need to to go make it happen. So it makes a ton of sense for the Vikings. It makes a ton of sense for Kirk. Kirk Cousins changing the, the, the contract game in the NFL. I mean, he's flat out changing it because he's like you said, signed a three year guaranteed deal. And he's going to be 33 and 34 maybe, and have the chance to re up again. It's, it's the baseball model. It re- I mean, the people have talked about why, you know, trout signing all the, he's going to Mike Trout's going to sign three monster deals in his career. All hundred percent guaranteed. Yeah, and here's why it's great for cousins because cousins is going from a situation in Washington where it was a roller coaster ride, very tumultuous. He didn't have any kind of defense. Their defense was bottom 10 in the NFL the last three years. And last year, he didn't have really anybody to throw to. Now, as a quarterback, you're looking, wait, I've got Diggs and Thielen that I could throw to. I've got a really good tight end. I got this revamped offensive line that's going to keep me clean and give us a run game. DeFilippo's my play caller, who's a hot name. Now, we'll find out if he can call plays, absolutely, but he's a hot name. And I don't have to go be Superman. I don't have to go score 30 a game to win games because my defense is so good. I've always said... Kirk Cousins was not positioning himself for this contract. He's positioned himself for the next one. And it makes a ton of sense for him to go to Minnesota on both ends, really. It really does. Yeah, he's a, he's in a good place. And we don't know how good Kirk Cousins can be. So his the war chest is, is stacked now. So it's going to be fun to watch him sling it around. And the reality uh, is, with- if Minnesota gets the Kirk Cousins from the last three years, they're going to make a Super Bowl. Yeah, they I'm, absolutely I'm with you. They will because of that defense. So you're one of the nicest guys that, that talks NFL, but you were perplexed by the Cardinals today. Big number, <laughs> big number for Sam Bradford. One year, so that, I guess, limits the risk a little bit, but one for 20 is monstrous. I, I Listen, I like Sam Bradford. I don't know him that well. Nice guy. We always say hello. He's been productive when he has played. But you invested twenty million dollars in a guy that played two games last year, that has habitually been hurt in the NFL. I just, where was the Kirk Cousins situation for them? I don't know. And then that was the smart decision for you. Like you don't think those you could have gotten AJ McCarron for a third of that price, or Mike Glennon for a third of that price. Twenty million, and and honestly, been more reliable. As a health thing, we uh, I, here's my thing. Did they any did they medically check out Sam Bradford? Have they medically checked him out? Because just because he passed his season ending physical, is that what happens? You get done with your year and you have to go pass a physical with your team. Just because he passed Minnesota's doesn't mean he's going to pass Arizona's. And free agent has free agency hasn't started. Yeah, they can't talk to him or they can't get that detailed with him yet. And 
it, is it not a red flag that the Vikings didn't bring him back? Like, well, I again, mean, I think the Vikings were so we're missing one piece, and so they were going Kirk Cousins fair. till they could till, till they were exhausted in that situation. So I think that's more about the, the Kirk Cousins things, but the Bradford thing. But I just you you better have a very very strong one B because. He, it's not a if he'll play, it's when he'll play. And so who's that going to be for me? Because you just invested $20 million in Bradford. And it may work out where he plays and it's the, you know everyone else looks like the fool. But the, the history says that, that won't be the case. Mind you, mind you, the only guy they have to throw the ball to is Larry Fitzgerald. So it's not going to be a, 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 you know, a, an offense where you've got all these weapons. Because John Brown, the, the good uh, receiver opposite Larry Fitzgerald, is going to Baltimore. So you've got one guy that you can throw the ball to, and you've got an offensive line that's got some issues. So yeah, it's a it's a weird one. It's a twenty million for a guy that can't stay healthy, and it's not a knock on Sam. I'm not bashing him, but it's just the reality. And I yeah, the the, the greatest ability in the NFL is availability, and you the the Cardinals made the ultimate dice roll now. I still think they've got a plan for 1B. I really do. I would not be surprised if they went and signed Mike Glennon to a two-year, $7, 8000000 million deal and invested into a, a draft pick because you have to. You have to. You can't, you can't just go into the season with Sam Bradford and, and a, a rookie. You, 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 you'll get yeah. everyone to get fired. Again, the only the only piece that makes it somewhat understandable is, is that it's only one year. So they, they clearly have something planned where – he can dump knowledge on somebody and then, and then move on from there. But my potentially my, well, my second favorite signing of the period. How about the jets? We've talked a lot about a lot about what they were going to do. Brilliant. I, I mean, I love the fact that they brought Josh McCown back because if you're looking at the young quarterbacks in the NFL, whether it was a guy that's already on your team or a team that you're going to, a guy that you're going to draft outside of getting a stud receiver or a stud lineman, the number one person you could have given him was Josh McCown. All the knowledge that, dude, it's so, it's so hard to play quarterback in the NFL. And, and he played well this year. Yeah, and nowadays teams want their younger guys to play sooner. So it's these kids are going from literally sleeping on futons, playing FIFA, eating at the cafeteria, kicking it with their buddies that are all their same age, and now they have to walk into a locker room of grown men, and they have to go be a CEO of a billion-dollar company. And so – I think it's just such a smart move by the Jets to go, well, listen, they've got Hackenberg there and they've got Petty, yes. They're going to draft a kid. I mean, I, they're, mm-hmm. they have to. And so how can we help that kid be successful? Well, let's give him a good player. A good, let's give him Josh McCown to mold him, to, to just pour into him. And Josh has said his greatest strength is being the backup. It's brilliant by the Jets. And to be honest with you, when I saw the news going around of Teddy Bridgewater and I was like, no, please don't. And so – I think the Josh McCown move is huge for whoever they are going to draft. Yeah, it's great. And we, I want to remind uh, the people watching, you can click the fan link to, or the fan line, excuse me, to ask questions directly to Dan. Uh, right now we have uh, Robbie from Massachusetts wants to queue up a Browns question for you. Hopefully it's about my boy T-Mobile, Tyrod Taylor, my, my, my go-to guy. Don't, don't worry. He, he into this question. <laughs> it's interesting because I don't see why anyone would sign with the Browns or I mean I guess they were traded but where does this propel them to because what I'm going to say about Tyrod Taylor, Tyra Taylor T-Mobile just like T-Mobile is my phone carrier I don't <laughs> want the entire organization so where is this going to take them in the future? Because I don't think it's taking too far. Are you talking about the free agent signings that they made? I'm talking more specifically Landry and Landry, T-Mobile, and really all the signings and trades they've made because I don't see how or any way they can win. I they thought have- it was – no, I mean, li- listen, they were 0-16 last year, but they had a bunch of close games. So that's part of it. I've been in 0-16. I know what – I know how those games swing by a play. So you – as much as they were 0-16, they could have been 4-12 and last year. They could have been 5-11. and Not that that's something to beat your chest over. Here's the thing. Landry's a brilliant signing. Brilliant. Because 
Landry doesn't make your offense better. He makes your team better. He's Steve Smith. He's got an absolute competitive fire. And one of the things that, you know, one of the reasons you go 0-16 is because you need a little toughness. You need a little dog in you. You need a little competitiveness. That's Landry. Now he's just, he's not just that. So they've got Josh Gordon. What's going to happen is they're going to have Josh Gordon lined up and teams are going to play man-to-man situations and lean a safety towards Josh Gordon. Well, you need a guy opposite him that can win in man-to-man situations. Hence Jarvis Landry. And so you're hundred percent the guy that can do that. A brilliant signing by them. The Tyrod Taylor signing is cool to me. He's a good player. He's they're going to draft him. He's a oh for sure. He's a better player than people think, and he's not a good as good of a player as people want him to be. He'll be sufficient. He's better than Des- Deshaun Kaiser. So they're better at the position today than they were a couple of days ago when they made the trade. They absolutely need to draft somebody at the number one position. No hesitation. Find the guy that you like and take him. Don't get cute with it. Don't make the mistake. The Demarius Randall trade for me, nah, I don't really like Demarius Randall's game. I played against him a bunch in Green Bay. He supposedly he's going to move to the, the safety position. But I'll say this. Some good moves by the Browns. They don't matter if they don't get it right on the quarterback position. I don't care who they brought in. It doesn't matter if you don't hit on your quarterback because you need to find someone for the next 10 years. And they have not done that in my entire lifetime. So, All right. Thanks, Robbie. I appreciate the call, man. I think Robbie was on last time we were on. We were on. I think Robbie's, a Robbie's, a big, Robbie's a big Dan Orlovsky fan. All right. So that, that wraps the teams that have made moves real quick. McCarron, Bridgewater, Foles, Glennon. Tough to pinpoint where they're where they're gonna land now because so much has changed. Of those four, what kind of move or what move would you make? Yeah, I think the number one thing would be was what you know, I would look at Mike Glennon. What can I get for what, what can I get him for? I mean, he's a year removed from you know kind of being the crown jewel of the free agent class quarterback wise and signing a forty five million dollar deal. He didn't play poorly last year in Chicago. He didn't play well, but they had nobody. So I'd be looking at him and going, okay, can I get him on the cheap and have a really, really good backup, you know? And then this, hey, what, what, are, what does Philly really want for Nick Foles? Because they, you, you, over the next couple weeks, as you, this first wave and then second wave come, you're going to find out how much Philly really, really wants Foles because they want that pick before the draft. And I wouldn't be surprised if someone makes a jump at Foles because – if you're these teams looking for guys and you're missing on them, you know, if you're Arizona and you've signed Bradford, well, is it better to take your second round pick and draft a kid this year or go get Nick Foles? And so I think some of the, but Glenn would be the first guy to entertain. Okay. All right, Dan, we got a question from Bill in New Jersey about QB contracts. Uh, we're going to, we're going to queue him up here. What's up, Bill? He's popping on in one minute. Fellas, thanks so much for uh, taking my call here. Dan, I, I don't want you to be biased about quarterback contracts, but I understand they're the most important position in football, maybe all of sports. But when I see a guy like Kirk Cousins getting $90 million for three years, does, does the quarterback contract kind of hinder some of the other signings that teams can do? Does, you know, does it put them a little bit of a, in a pigeonhole? Yeah, it's a good question, Bill. Thanks for it, dude. You, listen, the quarterback contracts are what they are. Every GM in the NFL will tell you, I'd rather have a dude that I slightly overpaid than trying to find one. That's just the reality of the position because as silly as the, the numbers of this sounds, it's easier to find 52 other guys to put around that one quarterback that you have than continue to try to find that needle in the haystack of a quarterback. Every year, we've got 10 pretty good quarterbacks in the NFL. Good, really good to great. There's no, we don't have 20. So there, there's not a lot of them. So when you get the chance to get one, if it costs you a little bit more than you want to, or your, your cap space necessarily allows you to, you've got to go do it. But that's, that's why teams draft kids. That's why teams draft, you know, a Russell Wilson in the third round and go on their run because they had that cap space. The Eagles with Carson Wentz. We're seeing with the Rams and Jared Goff. So it definitely hinders what you, you know, some pieces. And that's just the bullet you have to bite. Because again, if you have to decide between a franchise quarterback or, or a pretty good weak side linebacker, your franchise quarterback wins because he's the face of your franchise. You have a chance to win with that guy every week. 
you don't have a chance to win just because of a weak side linebacker. Does that make sense? You know, so it, the money part of it is what it is. That's why you've got to have good cap people, good numbers people to kind of maneuver all those parts. And then you, you, you set guys where, where they value, what value they fall into your team. Got it, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, dude. Thanks, Bill. All right, Dan, that's great. Moving on to uh, some non-QB player movement. Uh, I know you like what the Bears did today. You want to talk about oh, that? I love it. You know, I love it. So I woke up this morning, they signed Allen Robinson. I love Allen Robinson's game. I really do. I mean, if you look at the three years before last year with the ACL injury, super productive, playing in an offense and with a guy that isn't renowned for throwing the ball successfully with Bortles. Not a knock on Bortles, but he was still productive in that situation. And the great thing about him is he's a big body guy who plays as a big body guy. He's got vertical speed. He's strong. He's sudden. And he's got, everyone talks about a catch radius. Well, a catch radius means that he, you could just throw it anywhere near him and he'll catch it. You know, he's got incredibly strong, long arms and great reach for the ball. So I love that signing. And then immediately my mind went to, dude, they need to go get Trey Burton because then, then their offense can get fun. And then they signed Trey Burton this afternoon. And I'll get on the board to show, you know, why the Burton and Robinson combination is going to be so paramount to Mitchell Trubisky's success as a young kid. So listen, this is, this is what happens when you get a guy like Trey Burton and Allen Robinson. So say Chicago lines up and they've got Burton in the game with another tight end, which, which would be 12 personnel. And then they've got Allen Robinson on the side. So you can line up and do this. So that's your one tight end. And this now could be a wide receiver. This could be Burton. And this could be Allen Robinson. Okay? So now defenses have to decide, okay, they're in 12 personnel. How do we want to play them? So one, defenses will call zone. So if it's a zone situation, what you're going to get is a corner out here. This is the guy to pay attention to, Burton. You get a cornerback out there. Doesn't matter where anyone else is, really. If that's a cornerback, Trubisky, before the ball ever gets snapped, is going to know, I've got zone. Okay, so then you're going to have a game plan. Matt Nagy will have a game plan. Listen, Mitchell, if we get zone, we're going to try and run the ball. Bear strength is what? Run game with Jordan Howard. So we're gonna, they're going to be able to run the ball really well. Well, let's say that it's a third down situation or it's a team that likes to play man-to-man -man defense. So now, if a free safety or a linebacker walks out on Burton, Trubisky again has the answers before the test. I know it's in man-to-man. -man. So now Trubisky can go, okay, I've got man-to-man. -man. I've got a dude in Allen Robinson who can win in man-to-man -man situations. And I've got a guy in Burton who can win in man-to-man -man situations. So they line up in man. You're going to go into the game thinking, Hey, Mitchell, if we get number 54, the linebacker out here on Trey Burton, we're going to throw it to Burton. And we're going to throw him a go route. We're going to throw him a slant. We're going to throw him a double move. This is what Kansas City does with Kelsey and the Patriots do with Gronk. And this is what they, the Eagles did where Burton came from with Ertz. You're going to take advantage of those matchups. And then you say, hey, listen, if they're going to put number 26 out there, who's a safety, we don't like that matchup. But now we have a guy who can go win. Now we have a guy who can go win in man-to-man. -man. Mitchell, you don't need to figure out catching the snap. Okay, what's going on? Do I have man or zone? You already know that. Now the third part is this. Say they line up and put a corner back out here. And this is where good play callers come into play. You can have a, a man concept here route-wise. So let's say, you know, they run a pick play. Okay? And then up here... You could have a zone concept where you're going to run a go and a speed breaking out to attack your zone. So now if the, the corner sits out here and you know it's zone, you've already told your quarterback before the snap which side he has to read. It's called cutting the field in half. And so it's going to make the quarterback's job so much easier. And that's what you're seeing with good coaches is figuring out ways to take these talented guys that are matchup problems and getting your, your quarterback answers before the test. And that's why I loved those two signings because it was directly, directly done for Mitchell Trubisky. And he's going to have so much more success because of those two guys. 
So Dan, on that on that topic, Robert in the comments section wants to know: Does this mean after a year the Bears really have a ton of trust in Trubisky to go out there and get these two weapons? They like what they've seen. Well, yeah, I think they they absolutely liked what they've seen because they went and traded up for him. Here's the thing: You always hear in the NFL, man, we're going to put these guys in positions to be successful. Well, this is an organization doing just that. You can't ask. You really shouldn't ask any quarterback to go out and figure all that stuff out with the game, the NFL wise, with how talented guys are and fast and how spread out it is. But the, the the thing that you can do is go, okay, we've got this young quarterback that we like his tools. How can we make his job easier? How can we make his job easier? Let's go get him a really good receiver. Let's get him because you can't do it with any tight end. There's got to, you've got to have a tight end who can one be serviceable as a blocker. That's who Burton is. And two, is a mismatch problem. If you if you just put out any tight end out here, you can't throw him the ball, then it doesn't matter. Teams aren't scared of you. But Burton's that guy that can do all that stuff. And so that's how you're taking this young quarterback that you do like and going, okay, let's let's make this easy on him. Let's let's really progress his his mental ability at the line of scrimmage to go to the next step. And that's when you're gonna and that's that was the point behind the Nagy hire, too. He's coming from a, a Andy Reid. Who, and who I said, Kansas City did it with Kelsey. So Nagy's going to know all these things that you can do with Burton. And I think it's it's not necessarily a we trust Mitchell so much. It's going, okay, we've got this young quarterback that we've invested in. Let's get him really, really good with players around him. They can also add the Philly special to the playbook if Trubisky's got some good hands, right? Going to be have to be like Windy City special or something. Yeah, what a, what deep dish special. I love that. <laughs> All right, so that, that puts a bow on the Bears. A couple other uh, names popped up today. Amendola to the Dolphins. Um, and then the weirdest kind of back and forth for me today was the Packers moving on from Jordy, yeah. but moving Jimmy Graham in. It feels like it, it, if I'm in that position, I'm moving away from either of those ages and trying to get younger, unless there's a Jordy Nelson health issue, which, I, which I'm not aware of. But – where, where's, what are your thoughts on the pack? I mean, Jordy had like 97 catches last year and something like 12 touchdowns, maybe a couple more. So I think it's, you know, what what the reality is, is there's a new front office there. So they're doing things differently. It's the nasty part of the NFL where you've got this guy who's been incredible to you as an organization and it's time to cut ties to him in your eyes. And so they probably look at it and going, okay, <clears throat> it, it's not all that indifferent than – what Chicago decided to do with Burton. Jimmy Graham is that guy. He was the guy who kind of started it, you know, after Tony Gonzalez went on his run was, you know, those matchups. And so again, it's, it's how can we find those guys because they still have Devonte Adams who they just signed. I'm sure they want to sign Cobb to an extension here soon. And so they've really been missing that tight end ever since Jermichael Finley left. That makes those things clearer to Aaron Rodgers and that he can really go attack. And so I think it was more, the opportunity to sign Jimmy Graham than it was the disrespect of releasing Jordy Nelson. Jordy's going to have a hot market. He's way too good of a receiver, but I just think it's a new front office. It's a new front office. If this was last year, not happening, but it's a new front office Green Bay who said they wanted to be more aggressive. And I'm sure this has got a little bit of Aaron going, Hey, I really want to get a tight end. That is, is a matchup nightmare. How can we make it happen? Okay. Uh, jumping back to the quarterbacks, Matt from Massachusetts is on the fan line. Again, we encourage everybody to hop on the fan line. He's got a question for you comparing Cousins and Keenum. Uh, hi, Dan. So I was just wondering, you know, I think that for the Vikings, with the roster they have, especially considering cost, Case Keenum would be the best fit for their team. And, you know, maybe a team with a less – a less, just a less good roster, less talent – like the Jets or the Bills or the Cardinals would have been a better fit for Cousins, especially with that big price tag. What do you think about that? Yeah, I I, I, I don't see it that way, and here's my reasoning. I think that the, the Vikings plateaued. They got as high as they were going to get with Case Keenum. Good player, but they went and they went to the NFC Championship game, but it was very obvious in the NFC Championship where the deficiency was in their football team. Their defense didn't play great, but the quarterback position hurt them. And so Case Keenum, like I've said, his job was the easiest out of the NFL last year. And so he was maxed out. That's as good as he's going to play 
at the position more than likely. Now he may not, he may be more, but it's not going to get any easier for him. And so when you have the opportunity to look at it and go, okay, well, we were a good football team with case, but we were a good football team because of all those elements around him. How can, and like I said, those windows are small in the NFL. You've got a four or five year stretch where you can go win the whole thing. How can we go win this? Can we go win this whole thing with case? Probably not because we just were as good as we could be. And he was as good as he could be. Okay. Well, what's our alternative options? There's this guy, Kirk cousins on the market. Who's lit the league up in the last three years. I mean, I, I'm not a fantasy guy at all, but I did see a tweet today that Kirk cousins has got the most, you know, he's got the most, cons- you know, fantasy points out of any quarterback consistently out of certain topics, whatever. All I know is this, he's got the second most touchdowns and the third most, completion the third highest completion percentage in the nfl in the last three years he's a significant upgrade to case keenum and so if you're minnesota you're looking how can we win the super bowl we win it with kirk cousins matt unless that was tom brady knocking on your door you gotta you gotta tell those people to let you ask your questions bro i know i'm sorry yeah <laughs> no i'm kidding mom, Come on. mom or dad that was my dad all right we, we could get tell dad you, you're doing homework or yeah. something tell me leave you alone yeah. <laughs> Well, good question. All right, Dan. So we, we're already crossing 30 minutes here. It's it's going pretty fast, but I do want to talk to you about Drew Brees. I feel like a lot of people didn't even know he was a free agent. Um, it was so widely assumed he'd be going back to the Saints, and it makes sense. I think mo- a lot of people root for Drew Brees. Yeah. If you're in his position, and you are, you know, you got a nice young family, is there anything that was going to get him out of New Orleans? No shot. Here's the thing that just from his vantage point, right? He went there when disaster struck with Katrina and was the absolute linchpin, the face, the pinnacle of that city's turnaround because that city, it's been well documented, needed something in somebody. And Drew Brees and the Saints gave it to them. And so his part of his soul is there. And there was no shot he was leaving. And then you add in the fact that his kids are there. And his wife is there. His kids are in schools. They're in programs. They're in sports. His wife is embedded in the community and friendships. That's one of the things that makes free agency so hard is with guys that do have families, especially kids, the moving and the re, you know, the picking up and transferring of your family. Yes, the money's great. I'm, I don't want to downplay that, but it's not all roses. I mean, you've got to transplant your whole family again into a new community that you know is probably going to be short term again, you know, because that's the NFL world. And so I don't think there was any chance of him leaving. And also, if he did, that stadium would be down to the ground right now. I mean, that, <laughs> that fan base would have revolted and backlash. No one would go to games. And so I, you know, what happened is what, what many expected. And I, I do think it's, it's interesting how much free agency can change over the course of a player's life. Right after the draft, you're you're ready to go anywhere. You're you know you, you're the hottest new name in town. You want to come make a name for yourself. But to your point, with the family and and you went through this a little bit with the Rams last year. You, you were still you. Were, I remember you trying to decide like, am I going to take my family with me? Am I going to kind of go on a little exchange program and see how long it lasts? So yeah, I think it's I think it's important for all of us fans to realize that, I mean, these are actual lives that we're talking about. This is, these aren't just guys coming out and banging into each other on a football field. No doubt. And, it, you know, we've talked about Josh McCown, who's a friend of mine. Josh has got a daughter who's in college and they've lived apart during the football season. I think like the last eight years of his career. I mean, that's you, that's a lot of time that he's sacrificed away from his family and, and vice versa, his family away from him. And that's not, that's not something that gets talked about or brought up, but it's, I mean, could you imagine that being gone for half the year from your family? And I know that there's people who do it in the military and, and thank thankful for them for their service and whatnot, but it's not, it's not the glamorous thing that a lot of people in, in, envision it to be. Last question on, on the breeze um, coming from John actually in new Orleans is now the time for the Saints to start planning for Drew Brees' successor? Is it is it a high pick in this year's draft? What are you doing if you're down there? Well, two things. Well, the, the, the deal is set up where it's really a one-year deal for him. So I think it's time. The second thing is this. Only if it's the guy you like. 
because I mean they took a they've they've invested a third round pick in Garrett Grayson a couple years ago. It it didn't work out for them. I know they like Taysom Hill, who's the guy who ended up playing some special teams for them last year. But, Very well. Yeah, right. And no one made a big deal about them asking him to you know kind of make a position switch. But I think that if there's a guy that you really like in this draft, you've it, You've got to take them because you hit on all your draft picks last year, and so your team's in a good, pretty good place. So I, I don't think you do anything crazy to try and go get them, but if someone falls to you, it's worth the investment right now because GM, GMs in the NFL need to plan for today but also have a vision for tomorrow, and that tomorrow is coming very real for them at that position. And I don't, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to get someone like Mayfield because he's going to go away before they pick, yeah. but – Imagine a, a raw talent like Mayfield with a year or two behind Breeze. I mean, it's just it is a perfect situation if you're willing to tell Drew Breeze you're taking a quarterback instead of making the team better around him in his last one or two years. So yeah, here's the the name that I'll throw out there for people to pay attention to that I think is going to climb up boards a little bit more. He's in that Drew Brees mold is Logan Woodside out of Toledo. The more I've watched his film, the more he fits that mold. Uh, that, that Sean Payton likes in those quarterbacks, the Tony Romo's, the, the Drew Brees type of guys. And so he's a name that you can probably get in the second round, maybe the third, that I think, you know, someone's going to snatch him up, sit him for a year and let him develop. And I think he's got a chance to be a pretty good player. Okay. Yeah, that's great. The Saints are going to be interesting team to watch this year. In, in reality, they should have been, they should have been playing Philly most likely for the, for the trip to the Super Bowl and, it obviously didn't end the exact way that they wanted to, but I think they'll be back. So we're we're kind of out of time. We were going to talk a little bit about the draft. We can we could save that. We still got about a month or so until until that's upon us. But uh, just a couple quick ones at the end. Right before we went live, there was, uh, Adam Schefter had something out there about Diddy looking at an ownership stake in the Panthers. That that'd be an exciting thing for Charlotte. Well, it's Diddy. Who doesn't Steph- like Diddy? It's Diddy and Steph Curry, right? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. For, I think Diddy Steph would Curry. be the face. Give me Steph Curry. I'll take Steph Curry. <laughs> All right, I'll take Diddy. Uh, f- did you fill out a bracket yet? I have. I filled out four for my kids today. <laughs> wow. Did you? Were you picking mascots or uh, actual winners? No, my kids were picking off mascots, yeah. <laughs> well, based on how Philly's done this year, it's tough to pick against Nova, but we could talk about that another day. So, Anyways, thanks for everybody that called in. Yeah, I appreciate Robbie, it. I think, was from Vermont last week. He was from Massachusetts today. So we'll see, we'll see where Robbie pops up uh, pops up this time. And if you do call in, make sure you tell your dad you're busy so we don't so Dan doesn't get interrupted. But thanks a lot, everybody. We'll de- we'll let Dan close it out. But keep keep the questions coming. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Dan's yeah. got a ton of knowledge he can drop on all of us. Yeah, it was good tonight. I'm, I'm- I'm glad that we got it done. Obviously, a huge day in the NFL. Good questions. <clears throat> My thing would be like this. If there's more questions that people have, you can hit me up on Twitter at Dan Orlovsky7. You can hit up Dave Phelps at Phelpsy the Kid at, on Twitter. Then we also have a podcast that you can hit up uh, hit us up on the backup plan pod with questions, emails, all that stuff. So, you know, this is this is a ton of fun for us to do and whatnot. So we enjoy it and, and appreciate everyone coming. We'll see you guys next week. Fan cred. Thanks, guys.